At the same time as our knowledge of the Earth has been revolutionized by new discoveries, so new discoveries are greatly expanding our knowledge of the other planets in our solar system. The Viking landings on Mars are an example of the kind of information, or the kind of projects which are yielding information, that is greatly increasing our understanding of how our Earth fits in with the other members of our solar system. Flights are also on the way to the outer planets of our solar system, much, much farther away than, than Mars, to planets like Jupiter and Saturn. And very rapidly, we're beginning to see how the Earth fits into the solar system of which it's a part. It's a branch of geology which illustrates once again how the science borders on other sciences. We've already seen how it borders on biology, for example. Geology also has links to astronomy. And it's geologists who've been concerned with the interpretation of the data from other planets, because it's geologists, of course, who look at the rocks of this planet. It's a unit that you will find, I think, fascinating. Putting the Earth in perspective, is only possible once you have some idea of what the processes and the geology of the Earth is like. The geology of the other planets is sometimes very, very different. And with that earthly knowledge as a reference point, then it becomes quite exciting to look at the other planets. The first part of the hour is the planet of man film, the cosmic connection, and then another half hour of the planets of our solar system, all putting the Earth in perspective. I often think, if I sit on the deck of this Hong Kong junk, especially at night time, that it'd be wonderful to see a really large shooting star. Some people do see them from time to time, you know, and the larger ones often produce a stone that falls to Earth. That's to say, a meteorite. Many meteorites have been collected now and studied, and they've told us quite a bit about other parts of the solar system. And recently, in the last few years, astronauts have visited the Moon, and satellites have flown past Mercury and Mars and other planets fairly close by and given us good photographs of these. So they're finding out a lot about other heavenly bodies, and this tells us in turn a good deal about the Earth. So this program is devoted to what we know about meteorites and other planets. In 1928, a remote region of Siberia was visited by a scientific expedition. Their aim, to study the circumstances surrounding a strange event observed and heard by thousands. Eyewitnesses told of a blinding flash of light, ear-splitting explosions, violent gusts of air. Twenty years after the event, L.A. Kulik led an expedition to the Tunguska River region of the USSR to find the location of history's greatest suspected impact from outer space. At the site, Kulik found devastation. Trees snapped like twigs, their tops scorched and burned. Their trunks spread out fan-like from the center. The forest, dead 20 years, lay rotting at its roots. Kulik believed the depressions he saw in the swamp were craters, 
formed by meteorite impacts. But he found no meteorites. All the excavations and drillings were in vain. It's now believed that the Tunguska devastation was caused by the fall of some other cosmic body, perhaps the head of a comet, but not a meteorite. When the solar system was formed nearly four and one half billion years ago, some fragments were not incorporated into any of the planets. These remaining smaller bodies, called asteroids, are concentrated in a belt between Mars and Jupiter, known as the asteroid belt. Some asteroids, not in the belt, fly through space to strike other planets. Those which have not yet struck a planet are called meteoroids. As meteoroids fall into the atmosphere, they become heated and vaporized by friction and appear as luminous streaks, meteors. Here at the Spring Hill Meteor Observatory of the National Research Council, observers plot the magnitude and direction of their meteor sightings. Millions enter the Earth's atmosphere daily. All but a few, however, burn up. Those that survive the journey to land on the Earth are called meteorites. Most are very small. The possibility of a large meteorite hitting the Earth is very remote. But time is long. What Harvey what Nanninger, a pioneer in the study of meteorites. Well, His persistent I... research and 